What is the difference between an intensive property and an extensive property? What would you say? Intensive properties are properties that do not depend on the amount of substance, whereas an extensive property does depend on the amount of substance. So a good example of this is the boiling point of a substance. The boiling point of water at sea level is 100 degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter if you have 50 grams of water or if you have 200 grams of water. At sea level, for both samples, the boiling point will be 100. So the boiling point of water doesn't depend on how much water you have. So that makes it an intensive property. Now, the same is true for the melting point of a substance. That, too, is an intensive property. Now, let's look at some extensive properties. So the number of moles of substance that you have, that is an extensive property because that depends on the quantity of matter that you have. The same is true for mass. The more, uh, the more that you have of something, the more mass you have. So mass is an extensive property. Weight is an extensive property because as you increase the mass of a substance, the weight is going to increase. Weight is a force, but mass represents the quantity of matter. Now, the length of a substance is an extensive property. It doesn't depend on the identity of the substance, but it depends on how much of the substance you have. The more that you have of a substance, likely the longer that substance will be. And as the length increases, the area increases. So area is dependent on the quantity of matter. So that's an extensive property. And the same is true for volume. Volume is length cube. So the volume will be an extensive property. Now, other examples for intensive properties include the specific heat capacity. That is an intensive property. For water, it's 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. Regardless if you have 10 grams of water or 100 grams of water, the specific heat capacity of water remains the same. Now, when you take the ratio of two extensive properties, this can produce an intensive property. A good example of that is density. Density is the ratio of mass and volume. Mass is an extensive property, and it, the same is true for volume. But when you divide these two, you get an intensive property known as density. So the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter, that density is going to be the same regardless if you have 20 grams of water or 40 grams of water. So density doesn't depend on how much substance you have. It's an intensive property. Now, some intensive properties can be used to identify substance. For instance, the density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per milliliter, or 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. So if we have a substance that has this density, it's likely to be aluminum. The boiling point can also be used to identify a substance. If the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, where the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm, you're likely dealing with water. Now here are some other intensive properties. Conductivity, that's an intensive property. Metals are known to conduct electricity. So if you have a substance that conducts electricity, you're likely dealing with a metal. Now you do have some nonmetals that can conduct electricity like graphite, but for the most part, it's probably gonna be a metal. Now you have different forms of conductivity. You have electrical conductivity. You also have thermal conductivity. Metals can conduct heat, and the same is true for diamond. Diamond has, it's an excellent conductor of heat, so it has a high thermal conductivity value. Another intensive property includes temperature. That's intensive. Chemical properties are also intensive properties. So chemical properties like the color of a substance, 
the substance flammability, its combustibility, its solubility, its odor, its corrosiveness. Those chemical properties are also intensive properties. They don't change if you vary the amount of substance that you have. Now, not all physical properties are intensive, but some physical properties are intensive. So these include properties like metallic luster, the hardness of a substance. Diamond is very hard. The softness of a substance. Ductility, you know, can the material be drawn into wires? It's malleability, can it be hammered into sheets? So those are additional examples of intensive properties. Now, there are some other examples of extensive properties. Internal energy is an extensive property. Another one includes enthalpy, delta H, entropy, delta S, Gibbs free energy, delta G. If you look at the formulas for these properties, they depend on the number of moles or the quantity of matter that's associated with them. So that makes them extensive. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully I gave you a good introduction between the difference of intensive and extensive properties. By the way, for those of you who want more video content on this topic or related topics, like the difference between physical properties and chemical properties, or physical changes and chemical changes, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more content related to this topic. Or for those of you who are studying chemistry, if you're like in the beginning chapters, I'm going to be posting more videos in the description section below where it's going to help you get a good understanding of the basics of chemistry. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now, there's one more that I thought of, and I want to ask you a question. Heat capacity, not specific heat capacity, but heat capacity, would you say it's an intensive property or an extensive property? What would you say? Feel free to take a minute and think about it and even do some research on it. Heat capacity is an extensive property. The heat capacity does depend on the amount of substance that you have, whereas specific heat capacity does not. So make sure you understand the difference between the two. The specific heat capacity can be useful in helping you identify a substance, whereas the heat capacity is not useful in that case because it depends on the mass or moles of substance that you have. So remember that heat capacity is an extensive property, but specific heat capacity is an intensive property.